Hello. So I've got my blue gloves on again. I'm back over at the workshop with Walt. And I just thought I'd give you a quick update since I'm cracking on. Um, I've got most of the welding done now. Such a relief. I still need to take that window out and weld that panel in and then put in the new caravan window. But it does mean that I can look forward to doing or to finishing the bodywork. So I've got all the removable bits off where I can. I'm still sanding and filling the high top. So I'll show you a bit more of the detail as we go. You may have um, seen my previous video before using Google SketchUp to do to design the interior. That hasn't changed an awful lot from my original rendering. Um, but what it occurred to me was missing in this view is the actual structure for the furniture. Because it's uh, a 4x4 vehicle, I want it to be as rigid and rugged as possible. So I'm not just going to build it out of wooden panels. I need to build a framework uh, for everything to bolt to. Yeah. And I'm going to be using 8020 lightweight aluminium profile for the structure of my furniture. Um, so it's the same design, it's more, slightly more accurate, same layout as you'll see, um, but it gives you the chance to, for me to figure out where everything is going to be mounted to and start measuring up to order some of the bits. Um, it also gives a hint of what I'm looking at when it comes to finishing. So these are the, I'm going to have exterior hinges and latches and leave some ply edging um, on display as well for, for features. You can see here the shower room hasn't really changed, but the front of this unit as uh, the fridge here with a couple of cupboards above, nice eye level fridge. And then I've been playing around with this area here at the front. This is the dinette seating behind the cab and um, the idea, I wanted it to turn into a single bed if needs be so I've actually figured out a way once the, cush the, the, the cushions at the back of the seat are down to create the bed that this reveals a cubby hole into which you can put your feet so if, you, if you're sleeping this way as Lola might be head on the driver's seat and feet into the cubby hole well that, that's the thinking um, 8020 is particularly important here as well because obviously the oh, we need seat belts for for these two seats here. So I wanted to figure out a way of having a structural mounting connected directly to the van floor rather than the ply um, lining and insulation. Uh, something else: the space under here for a fresh water tank, 800 by 800 by 20. Uh, by 200 um, and the 8020 profile should be enough to support the structure around that and the reason this is slightly lower is because the tank will sit against the floor with very thin insulation underneath uh, whereas the rest of the van is up on uh, 25 mil insulation and 18 mil ply. There's the um, cassette loo idea that I'm sticking with it's going to be on runners, so you, and there'll be a handle on the front, so you pull it out into the shower room when you want to use it, and then you slide it back in. There's going to be some heavy duty draw runners along the sides here to support it. That's going to be the, the space for the, for the bed, uh, also daytime storage for bedding possibly. There's the porthole, which we'll see in the video, and then there'll be more storage at the back from the shower room for bits and bobs. So yeah, it's coming along. I'm starting to get to the stage where I need to spend a lot more money on the designs, uh, on the on the interior fittings and fixtures, like windows. Windows are sort of 300 quid each. That porthole is thankfully only 150, but I need to, I'm going to finish painting the outside, finish uh, sandblasting and sealing the underside 
and then get Walt out and drive him around a bit and uh, make a final decision on reliability and the expense I'm willing to spend on him. So I'm uh, unfortunately losing the orange. It was decided that it just would stick out too much like a sore thumb in a, a, in a residential area, which is inevitably where I'm going to be keeping the van when, when she's ready to use. So I'm going for um, some grey, stone grey rust over um, on the metal work on the body on the outside and I've got some oyster white uh, for the high top so I'm just making my way towards doing a bit of that I need to get up on the roof and finish the sanding where I put filler in to, um, fit the, to mount the roof make it as smooth as possible um, and then I can prime it and get ready for, uh, for rollering I'm going to roller the paint on so my gloves are already wearing thin because I'm up on the roof sanding the filler um, along the final seam of the roof graft. Needs uh, quite a lot of work to get it decent even though no one will really be seeing this. It's obviously uh, something I want to get right. And it's dusty up here. Just wondering whether I should get the hoover up. But um, yeah, roof needs a bit of work because obviously I've, I'm going to put a, a roof rack up here. I want to put a skylight in the back on one side, so a bit of thinking to be done about that as well. Right, well the filler is proving to be quite a job on the roof. I've obviously done it before on various different vehicles, but this is the tricky bit because the uh, top of the roof graft was a bit shallower uh, than the lower part, so the lower, lower part was proud, which means I've just got to fill, backfill to try and get a nice smooth finish. <coughs> I'm nearly there, but it's just taking ages to sand. The side looks pretty good, I think, I don't know if you can see that, but um, yeah, quite happy with that bit. Uh, I'm just going to take a break, and now I've got to grind down or rather just um, with a flat disc just take the top off some of this uh, um, that's vacuum on there but some of these points down here for example where I've used fiber to try and make a base for filler um, it's a bit, a bit amateur but um, let's give it a go and see what happens Well, thankfully, filler is the bit that I really like, actually. Um, it doesn't look great here, but at least it's up and over the new uh, pitted, badly welded surface. So once that's sanded back and another layer applied, it should be good to go. A little bit more here. Some around the windscreen. That's going to need a lot more work there, probably. And, um, yeah, same on this side. That'll be all right with a bit of work. Certainly need another coat and uh, just on another layer on the high top as well. But again, it always takes longer than you think. So just trying out the uh, porthole that I bought that I thought would be too big, but actually now it's it's up there in the position it will be in. I really like the look of it. Just need to check the measurements on the inside. I know I'm going to have to uh, ma uh, fabricate some beams to mount to support it. Let's run inside and have a look. So in here, uh, the problem is that we've got this joist in the way. It's going to go somewhere like that, which means I need to cut the joist. I think I might. Uh, I need to go across 
42 centimetres. So actually, not a lot of bar. There. Another thing to consider is the roof rack. So obviously, I've only got from here to the back. There's only one roof beam. So I'm going to weld actually beams that go to the to this structure above the door and to here. Maybe I'll even bolt it through or something. And then on this side, I want a skylight because this is going to be the bed. Bed's going to go across the back. So skylight's got to fit in that space. So I just need to measure up. So successful few hours stolen at the end of a busy day of work on a Thursday in the week. So yeah, that's a lot more little jobs t uh, crossed off the list. And now I'm just going to head back. It's uh, coming up for nine o'clock, I think. So it's going to be dark out outside. Taking some measurements so I can carry on making my plans. And it's back. Oh, look at that sky. Back home in the trusty Florida. See you on the road.